Welcome to Booming Your Bottom Line, a weekly podcast on how to find, serve, and keep local boomer consumers as your customers. If you are a small business owner, then this podcast is for you. Hosted by Mark Hager, CEO of Age and Place Networks, publisher of AgeandPlace.com, and expert consultant in the boomer consumer industry. And Aaron Murphy, architect, certified aging and place specialist, national speaker, and published author on aging in place. These two small business owners are going to help you learn what you need to know and step-by-step step what you need to do to grow your company through serving the rapidly growing older consumer niche. Now, get ready to supercharge your business. Hey, this is Mark Hager, and welcome to Booming Your Bottom Line, a podcast to help you explore what it means to grow a business that serves older consumers. Today we're going to talk a little bit about the opportunity that boomers and older consumers present for your business and what it can mean for you. I'm here with my co-host Aaron Murphy. Hey Aaron. Morning Mark, how are you? I'm doing great, how are you? Fantastic, looking forward to another episode. Me too. So let's just jump right into it and let's put this opportunity into perspective a little bit. We don't want to inundate everyone with a ton of statistics but I think that this particular subject merits at least a few. Yeah, in the interest of, you know, why bother, who cares, why should you listen to this? Um, you know, the statistics that matter about the boomers and they've changed every decade, right? That's just what they do. So when you when you learn that starting January 2011, 10,000 people started turning 65 every day, we got another 16 years of that, it's worth paying attention to as a demographic. You know, especially if you consider that they have five times the net worth of the U.S. average citizen, control 70% of the disposable income, and they equate to basically like 49% of consumer packaged goods in the U.S. So, wow. yeah, if, if you're not paying attention to that, then um, let's wake these folks up right now because as a, you know, as a business owner, that's that's stuff we can't ignore, right? Right. So, I, I, I want to real quick break that down into some real numbers, okay. uh, and and by real I mean fictitious, but just for example, um, yeah. let's let's say that your population in your city is around eighty two thousand, uh, and your percentage over sixty five is thirteen percent. That okay. would mean that the current group of sixty five plus would be a little over 10,000 people. Right. So we fast forward 16 years with a growth of 7%. That's about 5,700 people. Mm -hmm. And that puts the population around 16,400. And that is very substantial. Uh, yeah. In a city that's, you know, 82,000 people, that's a lot of people. You bet. So we'll go forward just a little bit more into 2050. And there's some communities that could see up to 23% that are 65 plus. Mm -hmm. That would mean at that rate of growth that there would be almost 19,000 people in that city that were over 65. So in the next, what is that? Next 35 years, we're talking about doubling your senior population. Exactly. Yeah. So that that is definitely worth paying attention to. So, you know, what most business owners are going to know is what does that really mean for them? I mean, obviously, it's more potential customers. You know, that's a gimme. Yeah. But uh, what other things? Well, you know, I think in that demographic, and that's the reason we started this, right, was, you know, today is just about the background of the opportunity. And then we'll talk about how to get to them, how to reach, how to connect, and all that stuff that is a very, you know, clinical and scientific and an art too i mean there's there's so many different pieces to that but your point you know of your city may double in the 65 plus range during the remainder of your business career that's huge it is that's huge. a huge deal and what's valid is that you may not understand how their needs are different than the rest of the customer base you may serve right i mean it doesn't matter whether it's auto dealership or or home remodeling or um, transportation. We mentioned that earlier, uh, previous podcast. You know, they own forty percent of all the homes. 
um, you know, they have the highest median income of any group. Uh, they've inherited and earned more money than any other demographic sector in the history of the United States. And like I said, they redefine every decade they go through. So, you know, if they're 60% of healthcare spending or they're 25% of toy purchases and they are buying online, right? This is all valid statistical data that we want to help folks capture. Right. So we're talking a ton of new consumers with income to spend and they're going to have different needs, physical and health conditions, you know. Um, they're going to have physical conditions that may not allow them to move as quickly as before or mentally they may not function as quickly as they used to. Uh, you know, they're also, just by the way they are as a generation, they're going to want different things than their younger counterparts. You know, yeah. what motivates them, what inspires them, what impresses them even, it's, it's going to be different. Their worldview is different. So, you know, and I mean, in some regards, they're similar. You know, they still want, they still have some of the base needs that everybody else does. But the key here is for small business owners is that they may not be able to get some of those base needs satisfied the same way that a younger person can. They're going to need help, you know, right. and that's where the small business comes in. You know, right. and, if, go ahead. and if you're not aware, if you're not aware of how they analyze a situation or uh, how they perceive value or how they are being treated in the way you package goods or refer to them as a group, right if you refer to them the wrong way it's not hard to put them off right. um but they have a huge community that they talk to and so we got to be careful and we got to you know be trained correctly for that exactly of course there's also something we talked about previously was the um the number of adult children that are working as caregivers you know this yeah. is this is a big opportunity for business owners and with such an increase in adult children taking care of their parents in some regard, you know, you're not, you may not just be talking to that older consumer. You might be talking to their kids, which means you've got to adapt your customer service, your processes, so you can satisfy their needs because they're different. They're not yeah. the customer. They have their own families and they have this additional task of taking care of this other person's life, you know? Yeah. And it also, you know, I guess in terms of the products and surfaces that you mentioned a little bit earlier, is that you may need to offer something different, or you may need to offer it in a different way than you yeah. do right now to be able to satisfy their needs or desires, you know? Absolutely, absolutely. And if you don't think this is not only science and art, and uh, it's emotional too, right? Let me give you just a real quick fun story you know, at a home show where, a, you know, 50 year old daughters taking her 74 year old um, father through a home show. And, and one of those, you know, walk in, sit down tubs where you close the door and it fills up. Right. The 20 some, the 20 something year old salesman comes out of that 10 by 10 booth to try to get the attention of the gentleman. He literally shoves the kid and says, basically, screw you. That's for old people. Okay, wow. so, right, and, you know, and the, the daughter, you know, pulling her hair out, going, oh boy, what do I do with this? But so to think that this is not a very gentle and, um, you know, it's got to be a calculated approach and you've got to know who we're talking to. Right. And that leads us, you know, to customer service and the whole customer experience. You know, Abs that's a perfect Absolutely. example of very poor of both of those. You know, yep. businesses are going to have to start embracing the idea that the that what they're currently doing may not be the best customer experience, may not be the best way to serve those customers. And if they're going to capture, you know, a, a significant portion of that market in their community, they they're going to have to adapt. They're going to have to change so some of the way they do things. Absolutely. Yeah. And, and we'll touch on all that in future uh, podcasts. But you just pointed out a good thing. Let's go back to the capture. Let's go. Let's re, let re, re revisit those stats. Okay. What what do you mean capture? 
for the business owner. Can you put that in a math perspective? You mean in terms of of bringing them in? You know, of, well, of go ahead. What does it mean to their bottom line? You know, we we prepped for this and talked a little bit about the math, and we oh yes, bo we bothered to say let's pretend you have an eighty-two thousand population in your city. So, in the interest of the business owner, because they want to know why they're here and listening to us, let's take that equation and let's let's right. use your capture concept. Okay, so let's say that that you could get six percent of of that of that percent of older consumers in your in your current in your market okay. um, now obviously every business is going to be different and you know what what they make out of every sale is going to be different but for the sake of argument let's say that you go with six percent and every customer is worth a thousand dollars to you okay okay over the course of a year right over a year so from the example that we gave earlier, 6% of those 16,400 people, you know, that is 984 customers. Okay. Okay, so 984 customers that could come in your door every year and you make $1,000 off of them. That's almost a million dollars. I like those numbers. Yeah. So, I mean, it, and for a small business, that's a lot of money. You know, that's right. a lot of that's a lot of service that you can provide. That's a lot of growth. So, Absolutely. you know, every business is going to be different. But even if it was half of that, that's still another five hundred thousand dollars in your bottom line. Right. So right. To yeah. Totally, yeah. totally but, worth the effort. You bet. Well, let's take me, for example. I'm a small business owner. OK. And I, I may only capture one percent because what I do is. A higher ticket item, right? But right. that client might be worth twenty thousand dollars as a fee to our architecture firm, or, or seventy five hundred, whatever. Let's pick a number. Let's say it's ten thousand, and I only capture one percent of the new folks. So what does that equate to? We said there was an additional nine hundred eighty four people, mm -hmm. right? And I'm going to get one percent, so that's ninety eight people. But it's worth ten grand to me, so we're still in the same ballpark, nine hundred eighty thousand dollars. Yep, that's huge. That's humongous to me. I mean, uh, you know, over the last few years, I've managed to capture more of the aging in place market through education and mm -hmm. public speaking and writing a book. All things that, again, we'll talk about as we get this thing rolling. That you know, education is the key uh, in the beginning of. Uh, how your relationship should look with your consumer. Right. Okay. So. Well, great. So do you have any closing remarks that you would like to offer any insight? Well, I think it would just be to ask the listener this question. If you don't get it right and somebody else does, how are you going to feel about that in your town? Everyone's looking at this. But if you don't get it right and your competition does, what does that do to your bottom line? Something to the tune of a million dollars a year. Right. Well, you know, and, and above and beyond that, I mean, obviously, small businesses, they're, they're concerned about, you know, getting more capital in and, and raising that bottom line. But there's also the impact in their community. You know, we need businesses to get this right yes. across the nation. And the impact that they're going to have in their communities by getting it right, not only are they going to grow financially, but more people are going to have their needs met. People are going to be happier. Their community is going to be healthier as a whole. And that's what we need. That's what we need. Good point. Yeah, I mean, yeah, as far as going to a place we've never been before, we're kind of headed into crisis mode as communities. Yes. And yes. so... Yes, please, you know, as a small business owner, take on the burden of solving this problem for the betterment of your own community. Great point. Right. All right. Well, uh, as you can see then, this whole situation with the boomers growing older is going to have some serious impacts. Um, our hope is that we can help business owners make those positive impacts. 
Yep. And being ready, being equipped to succeed and is the, is the best thing that you can do for you and your employees and your community. So thanks for tuning in, and we will see you on next week's episode. Have a Have great a good day. One. Thanks so much for listening to Booming Your Bottom Line with Mark Hager and Aaron Murphy. To learn more about starting, building, and growing a local business that profits in the older consumer niche, just visit the website at agentplace.com slash smallbusiness. And don't forget to sign up for the newsletter while you're there. If you'd like to get in contact with us, you can email us at smallbusiness at agentplace.com. Fill out the contact form on the website or give us a ring at 865-236-1247. Booming Your Bottom Line is a joint venture of agentplace.com and empowering the mature mind.